Warriors biggest lead is right now at nine with 556 remaining in the half and Matt Steinmetz Sacramento got the Warriors in last year by beating the Clippers and they knocked off Denver on Saturday night. That's right, Bob. Last year was the final Sunday of the season, and the Kings went down to L.A. and beat the Clippers, and that set up the Warriors' run. Warriors might need to uh, send them a thank you note again this year because on Saturday they went into Denver, withstood a furious rally, and beat the Nuggets. And, of course, it just got better the following day because uh, the Sonics knocked off the Nuggets, too. You want to talk about some gravy. Well, and you, you need that. <laughs> You're sitting there with 46 wins. You have 21 road wins. You've had a wonderful season. But no team in NBA history since they've gone to the 16-team format has ever missed the playoffs with 46 wins. And yet, it, it, it's not done for the Warriors as they'll finish up with the game. 5 o'clock, Denver. But then Elton Brand, Shaq, and Nash, and Kevin Durant to finish it off, Jim. Well, there'll be less pressure on the Warriors depending on the outcome, and there could be more pressure, if Denver plays in Utah and beats Utah in Utah. They've only lost four games at home all season long. So the Warriors are looking for Denver to lose that game. That's the big deciding factor. And we're keeping an eye on Denver and the Clippers, just as they're keeping an eye on the Warriors and the Kings. Inside to Brandon Wright. And Brandon Wright in five minutes off the bench has six points and a rebound on three of four shooting and is doing an awful nice Beatrice impersonation inside. Well, he's got that length and that little jump hook is going to become a little go-to finish for him. That's, that's good help from Monte Ellis from the ring. Salmon's recovering. Shot clock at seven. He will launch that in. Salmon's an intriguing player in that he was going to go to Toronto, he was going to go to Arizona, and he ended up coming to Sacramento. Buki drops in the three. With a double digit lead for the first time tonight. Not seen Michael Petrus, but he is in uniform tonight. Salmon's driving. Rimming that out. Harrington, nice rebound. And surveying things into Azabuki to put it up and in. Baron Davis, 18 points, 7 assists, 3 rebounds. Kevin Martin rising, and he is fouled. Jim, how would you guard Kevin Martin? That, that's very tough because he's got a good first step, and he knows how to use his first step and the dribble. So if you crowd him, he's going to go around you, and, and it's hard to recover on him because he's wiry, knows how to jump into you. You, you. you play him straight up, and I would prefer for him to take a jump shot and try to challenge it, but he's one of those gifted players where the offensive player has the advantage, and he would be a load, quite frankly. Well, Martin, as most big-time scorers do, he's only 2 of 4 from the field, but he's 9 of 9 from the foul line. Yeah, I mean, you can't shade him one way or the other. He's going to get around you. By the way, here are the people ahead of him in the scoring race. LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Allen Iverson, Carmelo Anthony, Amari Stoudemire. Yeah, I've, heard yeah. of, I've heard of all of those yeah, guys, too. Yeah, okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, then, and then you throw him in. Who's the least known? Kevin Martin. Yeah, pretty, but he's pretty doggone good, isn't he? Those are checking in. And he'll get himself to the foul line. And that's generally just as good as a basket because he shoots free throws extremely well. Well, you use the well-known thing. If you see K. Martin in the league, half the people still say Kenyon. But eventually they're going to say Kevin. Good yeah. Well, you want to go to the NBA Finals, Wrigley's Double Mint Gum, the official gum of the NBA, would love to help you. Grab a specially marked pack of Double Mint Gum or go to WrigleyHoops.com for more details and a free entry. Brozier, knocking down the free throw. Austin at 92%. Not a lot of attempts for the best Warrior free thrower by percentage all season. He is now 24 of 26 from the line. Azubuki with that made three. Eight of his last 15 yep. attempts. Oh, Kalena's answered the bell. I mean, he and Monte and Bia Grinch and Reggie Theus will stop it. So this is the Warriors' biggest lead. Barron with an 18.7 assist first half. But now Azabuki kicking in. Crozier off the bench. 
Saw Brandon Wright come in with six points, and the Warriors still shooting 59%. Marines.com are leaders of the game. The most threes in a season for any Warrior. It's Barron this year. And he's not done yet. That's a huge number. Crows are fouling Kevin Martin. Well, think about Barron's numbers, the three. He's going to get over 500 attempted easily. Is that one out of every three field goal attempts he takes is a three. Defensive three second technical on the Warriors as Barron was lurking in the lane. Kevin Martin, nine of ten from the line, make it ten of eleven. I still wouldn't teach anyone to shoot the way he does. No, well, I, that I, side saddle delivery. I toyed with this as a key possibility. Keep them off the free throw line. They're the third best free throw shooting team in the league, and mainly Kevin Martin because he shoots about 10 a game. And look what he's done in the first half, and now two more free throws because free throws can keep you in the game. And that's right now what's bringing the Kings back to this. They would love for this to continue in the second half, and Reggie Theus will preach that theme. Try to slow it down a little bit, guys, because the Warriors have been pushing that up tempo. Make them play half court, and let's get to the free throw line more often, and we're going to have a chance. I think that's well said because. Part of Mike D'Antoni and Phoenix, they don't like to foul because they right. never want to stop the game. It's a rhythm thing. When the Warriors get in that frenetic rhythm pace, these free throws, it disjoints the game and slows it down. So Spencer Hawes knocking out a couple free throws. He's the first member of the Kings to take a free throw, not named Kevin Martin. He's Kmart 10 of 11. Aaron, tough fadeaway. Crozier batting it to open space, but Martin has it. Garcia has an easy one and another foul. And now a technical on Barron. You want to talk about free throws. Defensive technical. Foul on Spencer Hawes and one for Garcia. Well, technical foul on Barron. What I want to know is how do you make a pass to a man under the basket after you retrieve the ball and make a 360 spin and a couple of dribbles and he's still going to be open there's time enough to get back Kobe Bryant leads the NBA in technical fouls but Baron Davis is second but you should be able to recover in that amount of time it took Kevin Martin to deliver the ball See it breaking the free throw, but a 13 point lead evaporated. And gone. And without any clock really being run because of the fouls. And Barron down the lane. Crozier tipping it in. Great play off to Crozier. Never assume that layup is going to be made. Saw Barron do that in New Orleans. Dribble around behind his back, right in the thick of traffic. Another foul. Steven Jackson will pick up the personal. How about this? Around your man, behind the back, in traffic, doesn't get the roll, but a good follow-up. But not many people able to do that. Okay, Ed Malloy's on a roll now, because now Don Nelson has a technical foul. And you've got the same official being incredibly active right now and not making too many people happy. And technical free throw is missed. So Nelly a tee, Barron a tee, a defensive three-second technical. Garcia drawing two fouls, Hawes drawing a foul, and Martin drawing a foul. That is not very demonstrative. Well, I, you're exactly right, and I think he called it primarily because Don was out to half court, way past the coach's little hash mark, and I think that I think he was already going to give it to him no matter what. Maybe warn him and say go back, but if he said anything at all, it was going to be a T. Well, it's a seven-point game, and the Kings have 57 points in this first half. Yes, the Warriors have scored, but can they stop the Kings? Dante saved a turnover, an 8-2 Sacramento run. Aaron, and he's saying, okay, we're going to have whistles blown. I'm going to make sure I get my fair share, and he'll go to the line. 